Well, it's all football today. Football, football and football. Um, after this remarkable match, which apparently is supposed to have pulled an audience of around 5 billion people. And I think it would probably be fair to say that the world wanted Argentina to win. The world loves uh, Lionel Messi. They'll probably love uh, Mbappé in the same way in four years' time, given the kind of... Uh, skills he's got and I'm sure he's going to spread across football fields over the next uh, four years before uh, the next World Cup in North America but anyway and uh, it was a close run thing one of the best finals in fact the commentators were talking about it may well have been the best game of football of all time which is a very big call anyway with me now is our two regular panellists that we've used over the last couple of weeks while I've been here sitting in for Martin J. Telfer who's with me from Barcelona and Sam Malcolmson former or white who went to the 1982 World Cup um, here in in Auckland and they can hear each other so we'll get underway with the conversation so Sam it clearly was a, a wonderful match you've seen an, a lot of World Cup finals you were there in Spain in 1982 would you rate it the best or one of the best one of the best I think it was I think it was entertaining uh, for, and I think that for 60 minutes it was one-sided it was all uh, it was all Argentina and then we, we thought, OK, they're going to get a third goal. And then when uh, the, the equaliser from, from uh, I can't even remember who we played, France, suddenly the game changed because they scored two goals in, in two minutes. Mm. Yes, the, the brilliance of Mbappé dragged them back into the game. Jay, you were, I think, in a big sports bar in uh, Barcelona, a place that you've likened to the Viaduct Basin in Auckland. Uh, I imagine there was a large Argentinian population there, of course, so that Argentinians can come to Spain, not have to worry about learning a language. So what was the feeling like in that Spanish city during this World Cup final, particularly the place you were at? Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of excitement and a lot of nerves, um, not only from the tens of thousands of Argentinians who live here, but also from the Catalans, because of course Messi uh, played and play, you know spent the uh, spent spent the best parts of his career at Barcelona. So mm. most Catalans were definitely rooting for Argentina, uh, and it's fair to say that uh, bars and the city in general was very pro Messi today, very pro Argentina as well. And your thoughts on the match, just generally? I I agree with Sam totally. I think this is definitely. It, it, the, the the best World Cup final for a long, long time. And um, it was just, yeah, Sam said, for the first 60, 70 minutes, it looked pretty one-sided. Argentina were in total control. And then, frankly, out of nothing, uh, France equalised. And uh, from then, the game kind of was a bit like a seesaw. But, I mean, it was so unpredictable. And I think that's just a perfect way to end what has been a wildly predictable and wildly unpredictable and exciting World Cup. So who, who won the battle in your mind, Sam, between the two best players at the, at the World Cup, Mbappe? I mean, here's a guy who scores four goals in this match, three and then one from the penalty spot. Four goals, four times out of four, he finds the back of the opposition net, but he goes home a loser uh, or... Um, Messi, who played a large part in that Argentinian win, who was the better of the two? I, I'm going to be biased and say Messi, because Messi was fired up right from right from the goal, and uh, he he scored he scored his goals. Obviously, um, Mbappe had his hat trick, but he scored two penalties. And as Jay said, the game changed right away when when they scored the first goal. But I, I think that. Uh, I think Messi, you know, to put as much energy and guile into this game at 35 compared to Mbappe, who's 23, is, is amazing. And I think that uh, Messi really wanted it. And uh, there is undeniable Mbappe's skill. I mean, his second goal was, yeah. was a peach. It was beautiful. Mm. And, I mean, that was all skill. But I think, I think in general that uh, I am biased because... Uh, I, I, I believe very much in Messi. And Mbappe hasn't proved anything yet. Yes, he's, he's won a World Cup, but he's only 17 or 19. And, and then he's played another one this time. But you know what? Until he leaves PSG, 
and actually win something domestically with a proper team, then I don't think he'll ever be called the greatest. I mean, when, when, when Messi played at Barcelona, they won the Champions League, they won the Spanish League, they won the Super, Super Club Championship. Uh, I think he's not done anything. Probably the only two, the only two medals that he's won has, has been the, the, the league, the French League and the World Cup. So he's got a lot of he's got a lot of finding to do and a lot of winning to do to equal Messi. So Jay, who would you give your vote to on the night, Messi or Mbappe? I think um, I think my I think Mbappe was was the better player. Uh, I think yeah, I mean you know yeah, two of his goals were penalties, but two well taken penalties. And um, I mean, gosh, that's that scoring a hat trick in a World Cup final. Is, is is incredible and I mean sure he was fairly anonymous for the first 70 minutes but when he exploded into life I mean there was there was just no going back and um, Messi yeah well one of his goals was a penalty as well and um, he didn't take his say his second goal was well was pretty well taken but not the incredible goal that that was Mbappe's second goal and um, yeah, wow! I have not seen a performance that good from a player in a World Cup final ever since I was born. Mm. You know, from uh, with, with regard to Mbappe's performance. I amazing. wonder. I wonder, Jay, whether there. I don't know whether you saw some, any signs of this. Although I did see a couple of French players towards the end. It might have been extra time on their knees, almost uh, wanting to vomit. I wonder whether. You detected any signs, and I'll put this to Sam as well, whether you detected any signs of uh, fatigue or lethargy in that French team that may have been a hangover from the virus that hit the squad midweek, which took away some of their energy. Well, I'm not a doctor, but, um, but it could very well have been possible because there were players who had the virus that actually played in, uh, in today's game, such as Raphael Varane, uh, and Ibrahima Kanate, among others. And, um, yeah, so that that could definitely have been part mm. of the reason. Sam? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I think a few, a few of them did look tired and fatigued. I mean, Anton Griezmann, to me, was probably the best, was probably one of the best players in the whole tournament and to reach the final. And today he was very anonymous. And there was a couple of other players who, who played, you know, right up into this final and were outstanding. But uh, today, I, again, they looked a bit tired. Varane ran himself to ground. Uh, I, I, maybe, maybe, maybe the fatigue has got to them in a, in a lot of ways, or it could maybe just be the way Argentina played for that first 60, mm. 60 70 minutes. So what about when it got to the playoff, guys? Where, we, where, where did your feelings lie, Jay, when you knew it was going to be a penalty shootout? Who did you favour? I know you wanted Argentina, I think, to win. But this young, powerful, very confident French side, I thought might have had the edge over the Arge- some of those ageing Argentinian legs or players. What did you think? Yeah, I could understand why how someone could come to that conclusion. But the, 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 record, the recent records speak for themselves. I, can't, I cannot remember the last time France won a penalty shootout. You must go back to... Sam might have a better knowledge than I do, but gosh, it, 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 they lost the 2006 World Cup on penalties. They lost to Switzerland last year in the Euros on penalties. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. Whereas Argentina, I mean, look, they beat the Dutch um, a, 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 about a week ago in the quarterfinals on penalties, and they beat Colombia in the semifinals of the of last year's Copa America on penalties. And Martinez, their goalkeeper, is a very good penalty stopper. Um, so for me, that that I probably would have would have given them. Okay. Sam, so, so what, what did you think before it started the penalty shootout? Yeah, the penalty show was, but 1986, I think, since uh, France won a shootout. I had I had every confidence oh, really? and every every confidence just just because I'd seen the, the shootout before with Argentina and I, I think the I think there's a confidence about then. I mean if you look at Messi's penalty, it just rolled in. If the goalkeeper had stood still, he could have picked <laughs> yes, it up and yes. thrown it back. Yeah. I mean it was that one. But there never ever looked like there's a penalty going to be missed. And I then I take 
it's for Scaloni, the, the, the coach of Argentina. He made great substitutions for the penalty takers because if you know three of his substitutes, two of his substitutes in the last five minutes were penalty takers and both of them scored. Mm. So, Sam, just looking at the, some of these individual awards, I, I presume that uh, the Golden Ball uh, award you concur with fully that uh, Messi was the ble- best player at this World Cup? Yeah, I think overall. I think the influence he's had in the game. I think the influence, if we go back to, to the Mexico game after they'd lost to Saudi Arabia, I think that Messi has had the greatest influence. And, of course, when the goalie he set up against Croatia, and, and I, think, I think we've got to take it into consideration. He is 35 year old and he, he played extremely. He, he played extremely well. He, he's played better than he has for ages. And you know, a lot of the good, a lot of the good players were the old ones. I mean, Luka Modric had a great, get, a great cup session as well. So, yeah, it, it's that's that's the sort of thing I think that uh, Lionel Messi has shown out. Jay, do you agree the golden ball should have gone to Mbappe? Uh, should have gone to a Messi, or should it have gone to Mbappe? Well, I'm a Messi fan, but I do believe it should have gone to Mbappe. I think um, he was the better player in the final, and it's worth mentioning that six out of Mbappe's eight goals were not penalties, and the quality of some of his of his assists, especially the one, the second one for. Um, France's second goal against Morocco in the semi-final was sublime, and he was just—he was absolutely incredible. Messi had a great tournament too, but in terms of individual performances, uh, there's only one winner, and that's Mbappe. Can't agree. I can't agree there. Come on, Jay, you've been drinking too much in that bar. I mean, the goalie—the goal that was scored by, uh, you know, that Argentina scored when. Uh, Messi went back the centre back for Croatia, who was probably one of the best defenders in the league. I think he's done that. And if you look, if you look overall, I don't think Mbappe was outstanding in, in too many games. He wasn't needed as much as Messi was needed for Barca for for Argentina. I think that he had a good supporting act. And as I said, Anton Griezmann, I think, had a, a lot to do with how Mbappe played in the games before the final. Mm, interesting. Um, two great players, and it was wonderful that they both got all they featured so prominently. What between them, uh, uh, well, you could argue six goals, I suppose, if you count the penalty sh- shootout kicks as well. Uh, what about the young player of the year, Jay? Um, um, who was it? Uh, Fernandez, the best young uh, player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was Enzo Fernandez. Again, something I, I disagree with. The guys had a good tournament, without a doubt. He, he made a real difference to Argentina when he came in uh, for the second game against Mexico. But, I mean, the guy who should have won it was another Argentinian guy, Julian Alvarez, who scored four goals, and all of them were important goals as well uh, that really helped Argentina uh, win the World Cup, not least um, the two goals he got against um, Croatia in the semi semifinal, um, you know, and he hasn't even been playing for Argentina for that long. So, to me, that's, uh, I mean, he, he should have won. the Julian Alvarez should have won the Best Young Player Award. Sam? Yes, I think, I think Fernandez, was, Fernandez was, was given up for consistency. But I agree with Jay. The best, the best young player was Alvarez. He scored goals that were important goals. And he gave the, he gave the, the Argentinian the attack greater potency when he came on. I don't, I don't think he played the first game against uh, Saudi Arabia. He came on in, in, in the second game we played Mexico and he improved with every game. So I, I'm totally in agree with Jay that Alvarez, to me, was the best young player. OK, the other interesting thing, guys, which I've noticed this morning, um, is why I probably don't have a, too many sympathies with France and why I'm not crying into my lunchtime coffee here. Uh, even though they finished runners-up, and uh, clearly disappointed with the result. I see they're taking home, I think, the best part of about um, $44 um, million in New Zealand money. Um, Argentina are taking home in our money, $66 million. Croatia's getting uh, just over $30 million, and Morocco around $30 million, all of which means, Sam, um, we've got to have that New Zealand team at the next World Cup, uh, if only to bring home some serious money. 
That's right. That's big, serious money. It is serious. I know that when we qualified in '82, suddenly we got we got a sort of thing of some like big five million, maybe but even more. And at that time, that made such a difference to the New Zealand coffers. And you, you think of the amount of the money. Uh, some of it will be divided amongst the players, and well, some I think, of it, yeah, no I, doubt, will go. To, I think forty yeah. percent goes to the players. Um, and I think every yeah. team that qualified for the World Cup this year takes home in New Zealand money twelve million dollars. Oh. Of course, with forty-eight teams at the next one, and the takings might be a little less. But um, this is another remarkable figure: the income, uh, the income for FIFA from this World Cup, television rights, sponsorship rights, and any other income sources totaled in our money eleven point seven billion. Billion, we're talking a thousand million, eleven thousand million dollars, and every team that competed there uh, takes home twelve million dollars. So it could be a little more, could be a little less. But it's a lot of money. Just some final thoughts, guys, from both of you. Um, Jay, uh, it's been a wonderful football tournament, but like a lot of people, I can't divorce um, the events around the preparation and staging of this, and uh, I'm left with this feeling that uh, Qatar have basically used the Football World Cup to sport clean their own poor political image um, and to kind of sweep under the carpet uh, a lot of the terrible things that have happened, particularly to migrant workers there. And um, I can't separate that out from the tournament. What about you? I can. I can. Um, Look, before I go any further, I want to say that I fully condemn the uh the ends justifying the means uh approach that qatar has had to treatment of migrant workers uh lgt people and and many other people and many other uh people however um the world cup is what happens on the pitch uh not not what not what happens before it and uh in terms and purely in terms of what happened on the pitch um you have to say that this has been one of the greatest World Cups ever, uh, and certainly what ends, and certainly the most unforgettable, for for both good and bad reasons. But yes, no, fantastic World Cup, loved it. Fantastic. Sam, I'll leave the last word to you. Yes, I, I I think that you've got to separate them because I I condemn the way they live, in. and also I condemn the fact that they got the tournament in, in the first place because yeah, me too. It was such a there's such a changing that had to happen, league tables, playing in summer, etc. And so I think that was against it. But on the pitch, I totally agree with Jay. The best World Cup we've had for years. And, and you know what? Some the supporters were magic. If you see the supporters, and even even after the game when they were outside, there was no drunken, there's no drunken going on, drunk, mm, mm. no fighting. And to me. That has a say well done, and I will take away nothing but wonderful memories of this World Cup because of the the teams that are not. Look at Japan did well, Australia did well, and Morocco obviously, and so I think the, the future is looking good in football. My only thing is I can't agree with 48 teams for the next World Cup, and I think that's I don't think it will be every bit as good as this one. Well, I suppose it's a reflection of the popularity of the sport. You know, there's, I think, around about 200 countries or sovereign states or entities uh, were involved in the qualifications to get to Qatar. So um, 48, that's still only 20% of the countries who play. I mean, rugby has, well, I think they have 16, but they have had a lot more than that and with a considerably smaller number of countries taking part. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Uh, I uh, I guess if it doesn't work, they can always revert back to 32, which is a neat number because you can get your quarterfinals and semifinals and group winners neatly um, from you know one equation straight, straight straight through to the final. But anyway, boys, I thank you very much indeed, Jay. Thank you for your contributions from Barcelona and Sam from not quite as a romantic apart. Well, it's a lovely place, Audi, well, where you live these days. I suppose you might call it the Barcelona of um, the, of New Zealand. But anyway, thanks, guys. Appreciate it, Sam. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, Brendan. And good luck, Jay. And uh, thank you, Jay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Brendan. Good chatting to both of you, as always.